I've been trying to quit smoking lately, so I'm going to talk about something that really cobs my corn so I can kind of get some agitation out. Anybody who's been a longtime subscriber of my channel knows that I have a pretty estranged history with Call of Duty. Just this gesture to spin a fucking basketball. To spin a basketball, you have to spend $5. I could go out in the real world and buy a $5 basketball and spin it my fucking self, dude. I am so pissed. Prior to this release cycle, the last Call of Duty I played was Black Ops 4, and that game was so bad that it still doesn't have a Steam release this far in the future. I could easily blame my dislike of the game on the Easter egg drama that I was a part of, but that would be a lie. I kind of thrived on that. In reality, the game itself was just a mess. It was broken, campaignless, and all of the development focus went into Blackout. <laughs> what you got with Black Ops 4 was a paid Warzone beta with a tacked-on hero-based multiplayer and a horribly distorted version of zombies. I honestly thought Call of Duty couldn't possibly get any worse when they started charging money for red dots and basketball spinning emotes, but I was horribly wrong, and it got so much worse. I'll be straight up about this. I never played Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, or Vanguard. I swore off Call of Duty, and I stuck to that for a long time. When Modern Warfare 2 came out, I was drawn in by the promise of a good campaign, and I figured I could also scratch another part of my competitive multiplayer itch. For the high price of 70 US dollars, what I actually got was a campaign that bored the hell out of me in less than an hour, so I exercised some escalating commitment, and I sunk about 120 hours into the multiplayer. By the time I was done, I'd come to two major conclusions. Weapon tuning is a broken system that's easily exploitable, and Removing the exploitability would make it totally useless, so it probably shouldn't exist at all. And, there's not enough content for this game to be worth $70. Not by a long shot. I actually feel like a fucking idiot for having bought this so many years after swearing off Call of Duty, but I can give it credit for one thing. It reaffirmed my position. I will now never buy another Call of Duty. Even if Microsoft acquires Activision. Even if the next Call of Duty is hailed as one of the greatest games ever made. Burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice, shame on me. In the spirit of being a responsible adult, Call of Duty is is just a money pit. Yearly release cycles with more microtransactions, less content, and a brain-dead amount of escalating commitment by the community. To add insult to injury, this particular release cycle is one of the absolute worst, with pay-to-win skin buffs in a $70 game that also sells battle passes with professionally tuned weapons that also can be perceived as a pay-to-win buffer. The game also runs like a legless horse, which is something that every Call of Duty on PC suffers from, but at least the others didn't require downscaling the resolution by 50% just to get a playable frame rate. This game is a fucking mess, crapped out in the middle of a massive monetized manure pile. I had such a piss poor experience that I didn't even want to go back to the game to capture footage to talk about it. The game you're seeing on screen right now is Call of Duty Ghosts running through the IW6X launcher, and the reason I'm showing an older Call of Duty title is to reaffirm a belief. You shouldn't let content creators kill your favorite games. Brainless morons of the clout chaser age allow games like Modern Warfare 2 to get away with predatory monetization because modern content creators are quick to kill an entire genre. Your game could be a thriving success on day one, but if a popular content creator looks at a game with a couple thousand players and says it's dead, then a massive chunk of the community will just stop playing. That couple thousand becomes a couple hundred and then quickly becomes nobody. Stop letting it happen. Like, if you want to stop spending money on bad new games that suck your wallet for every dollar you have, then play an old favorite and convince some friends to play that old favorite, and be a part of the community that keeps that old favorite alive. Like I said, burn me once, shame on you, burn me twice, shame on me. The players have the responsibility to think for themselves if they want a good experience. The players have the responsibility to say to their favorite creators, no, I play this game a lot, and even if the community is small, it definitely isn't dead. Or no, I still really like this game because my opinion is my opinion. The players have the responsibility to not waste money on annual microtransactions that never end and are not persistent between games. The players have the responsibility to not purchase cosmetics and microtransactions in games that have a premium price tag. Like, I get it. You get committed to a game or a content creator and you chase the acceptance that comes with being a part of the fan crowd, but at what cost? Aren't you sick of making yourselves miserable by living by somebody else's opinion? When, if ever, does it actually end? There's just no justifying shit like this. Thank you, and have a nice day.